Hello everyone and welcome to our class in Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning in Finance. In this video I want to talk a little bit about some problems associated with classification trees and what can be done to improve on the predictive accuracy and the predictive performance of decision and classification trees. Um, and as we've seen in the previous video, um, one problem associated with classification trees is overfitting. You can always use more levels, you can always use more nodes and go down even further. And what happens is the feature space is partitioned into more and more boxes. And this leads necessarily needs to overfitting. This is a problem for deep trees, uh, while shallow trees obviously might underfit the data. In the previous video, we saw an example where actually we only use two levels, two nodes or three nodes actually, um, for partitioning the feature space and this might lead to underfitting. So uh, the variance bias trade-off is very important to consider in the context of classification trees. And one possible to solution to this problem is to construct multiple different trees at training time and um, produce forecasts based on the mode of the classes in classification or the mean or median of the response variable in the regression example of the individual trees. And this is an ensemble technique. This is called random forest. So what are random forests? They can be constructed by introducing sort of randomness into the construction of each tree. For example, if you choose random subsamples or variables and splits, and this will then yield trees that are built independently of each other. And this concept, this uh, idea is usually referred to as bagging, um, also bootstrap aggregating. Another approach is to use multiple trees in a so-called boosting framework where we have weak learners, those are the shallow trees, and they are combined to yield a stronger estimator such that at each iteration step, classification or the regression error is reduced. And this will yield so-called boosted classification trees or regression trees, in which the individual trees are no longer built independently of each other. Um, and to see an illustration, uh, I would um, advise you, uh, get my cursor uh, to watch these two YouTube videos. So this one is the first uh, and this one is the second. There um, the uh, principles of boosting and bagging are explained quite nicely actually. And on the next slides um, we will apply boosted decision trees uh, to our classification problem and we will rely on the XG boost algorithm which is quite famous in the context of boosting. So we want to fit a boosted decision tree uh, again, carrot package. We do this in parallel for faster computation. Uh, five fold um, cross validation. So this is uh, train control. Um, as we're fitting boosted decision trees, it's quite in computationally intense. Um, we only use five fold cross validation. If you start the um, parallel computing session before that and uh, you move this to a, a cluster, you can also try tenfold uh, cross validation. Set C as is tradition. And we have X train and X test um, with um, the numeric data. Um, so we again exclude all numeric features, all categorical features. Um, the underlying XG boost algorithm already uses parallel processing implicitly. Therefore, we only employ two parallel processes in carrot wrapped around the implicit parallelism that is included uh, in XG boost. So we set the tune length equal to one, uh, two as carrot selects five different parameters, and this will then lead to t uh, two taken to the fifth power different parameter combinations that are considered in cross validation. So XG boost model is our object. We train based on X train and Y train. The method is XGB tree. So it's a classification tree that is boosted via XG boost. And the rest is standard. Train control, TR control, our options, cross validation, fivefold, and the metric used um, to select the best model is accuracy. And then we stop the cluster. So this is what we get out. 
100 rounds, maximal depth is two and some uh, additional parameters. And let's already consider the forecasting accuracy. So we predict based on XG boost model, the new data is X test, the reference is Y test, and we look at the error matrix. And now we see that actually where we previously had, um, I think 170, um, we have an improvement compared to both the support vector machine and the um, unboosted classification tree. So the accuracy now increases to 97%, but most importantly, sensitivity uh, increases. So um, it is a substantial improvement compared to the uh, to all three previous models, the classification tree, support vector machine, and k nearest neighbor. And you can see this in the increase in the sensitivity. It increased from 74 to 87% for the boosted tree ensemble. And by relying on the predictions from the boosted classification tree, um, for almost 300 out of the 341 customers, we can rightly predict that they are about to quit these services. Um, this leads to the increase in sensitivity. And then the manager could act on this. On the other hand, we would falsely approach only 26 out of 1,725 existing customers. So yes, this could be a way to move forward. In the next video, we want to take the same approach, decision trees, but use it in the context of a regression analysis. We need to use different data. Why? Because now we need a metric response variable.